this will be a basic video for editing gravity forms, editing your, your forms that are gravity forms. So when you go to your forms area and underneath the form that you want to edit, just click the edit link and then that will take you to the edit form page. We'll kind of cover the basic options that Gravity Forms gives you, um, but there there are some pretty advanced things that you can do with Gravity Forms. Um, but for this, we'll just go through the basics, um, some of the standard fields, maybe a few of the advanced fields. Um, so we have in here by default just you know name, email, phone, comments, like a paragraph text field. So the name we can come in here and just you know, we can have one field if we want for just first name. We can, you know, choose last name. And we can also make any of these required. So each of these have this checkbox in them to be required. To make them required fields. And over on the right hand side here, you can grab maybe if you want like some extra information from them, like uh, maybe what company they're from. You can grab the single line text right here. Let's put that maybe maybe below name. We'll do that. We'll do company. Appearance. Uh, field size, we can make it you know small. It'll show it right there. We can have a small, medium, or large. I usually prefer large because the large fields expand to the full width of the, the, the content section that they're in. So if it's like within it, with if like your form is inside of a column and your field size is large it'll fill up that the column width which is, it looks really nice when you know all the fields are um, consistent and you know they're the full width of the section but if you have a form on like a full page like a full width page you, some of these you don't need the field to go all the way across the 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 page like that so in that case you might choose you know, medium or small, depending on the size of the page that it's on. But for this, I believe this form is just inside of a column like this. So full width, if this was full width and this was full width, they would, they would come out here and that would look a lot nicer. Okay, so we've got a company, company field in there. We don't really want that required. Uh, we do want their name to be required, so we'll do that. It'll put a little asterisk next next to the, the the label of the field, just letting people know that you know that's that's required. Um, let's do email. We'll have required uh, phone number. We don't need it required, but we do want to make these fields large. Make sure they're full width. Appearance, field size, large. Okay, so next we want to uh, let's add some maybe some check boxes, you know, if see what maybe what a person's interested in. Um, what maybe what help do you need? Maybe you know web design, web, um, maybe some app development. Maybe they want an app made. And maybe, or they want some, maybe some SEO marketing like that. There you go. There's some three different things. So we had some checkboxes in there. Uh, we don't need that to be required. We do want maybe the comments field to be required so that we can, you know, make sure that they at least tell us, you know, what they kind of need. Um, some other options here, multi-select, drop down, which is, you know, just your basic drop down right there, add different choices to it. Uh, we can also make that full width like that. Um, let's see, what else do we need? Um, radio buttons. Radio buttons are similar to the checkboxes, but the radio button, you can only choose one of them. So if we had this, you know, what help do you need? Then if this was a radio button, they would only be able to choose one of these. But with the checkboxes, they can you know check off all that they need. That all when you whenever you see that text that says check all that apply, that that's what the checkboxes are used for. But like radio buttons, you can do you know you know like a yes or no question maybe. Um, 
that's about it for the standard. There's not much to the standard field. Uh, number, you might ask for a number, maybe their budget, you know, what, what's your lowest, what's your highest budget or something like that. You can put the number field. Advanced fields um, is, I wouldn't say there's, they're crazy advanced. They're just, you know, more advanced than, you know, the standard single line text field or paragraph text field, stuff like that. So the name is in there. Um, date, you can ask, you know what, oh, you can ask for a date. Put a date field in there that actually has like a little calendar that they can click. Uh, date picker, we can choose, you know, a calendar icon or even a custom icon that we make. A little calendar icon for them to click on and choose the date. Uh, date format, you can set the format there. Make sure that they're all consistent. Uh, time phone, address, the address field pretty much gives everything. So if you do the address field, you can choose if it's like an international address, United States, Canadian. Uh, if we do United States, you can, you know, choose which options show. You could just have the first street address, not the line two. Uh, default state, set it required, stuff like that. So that's the address that pretty much comes ready to go right out of the box. Uh, let's not have that one on there though. Website, email, file upload. You can have them, you know, upload some images. Maybe it's like a customer service kind of form. <clears throat> and, you know, you want them to submit some pictures of their problem. Do up file upload here. And then within the file upload, you can tell the, the allowed file extensions. I usually just do where it says you know, the examples down here, the JPEG, the GIF, the PNGs, PDFs. I usually just choose those right down here and allow those. But that Those are the basic files that, you know, people are going to submit. You can choose multi-file upload if you want them to be able to upload more than one. You could do the multi-file there. Maximum number of files. You can say no, no, no more than five images. The file size, you usually don't have to set this unless it's like, unless it's like a person that is maybe like a photographer or a designer that their, their files might be saved in like a, like a, a, a format where the file sizes are just huge. You could set this, you know, maximum file size, maybe five megabytes or 10, 10 would probably be good because I, I know there's a lot of images right out of cameras these days where it's it they're almost all larger than five megabytes so that kind of keep it down from there so we got our file upload field captcha we can have a captcha if we want you need to set that up through some settings though right here it'll tell you to use this you need to sign up for an api key uh, into your your reCAPTCHA site and secret keys in this reCAPTCHA settings section on the settings page of the Gravity Form. So there's a couple steps in setting up the CAPTCHA, but in the end, it's really helpful because uh, you know it's anti-spam. But I'll also show a different option to do some anti-spam. Uh, we can have a list, post fields. This is kind of more uh, techie, a little bit more programming. You can you know pull information from I don't know, pull information from the site. You can show, you know, you can have different categories, uh, post categories like that. Um, I don't know, it's just, this is a more of a, like a techie, more advanced area. You know, you can have custom fields in there, uh, the title of the post, the, the body text tags, stuff like that. Uh, the pricing fields, if you're going to have a form that is, going to be selling anything or going to be, you know, asking for any kind of um, payment or stuff like that. Or, or you, you don't even have to have a payment go through your form. You could just say, I don't know, maybe like a, um, what are those forms where uh, pledges, you can have somebody pledge, maybe something like that. You can have like a, you can show a product in here. So then someone can, you know, you can have different products and somebody can buy products through the form, uh, quantity, options, shipping, and total. Uh, if you have, the thing with the total field, if you have multiple products and a person can come through, you know, click different products, different quantities, 
and then you can have the total field and that will add everything up that they've chosen in the form all ready for you and that, that's also ready to go. And that'll just kind of give a total of everything that the person's going to be buying through the form. Uh, so that's about it for the different fields with the gravity forms. You can kind of see how I'm just kind of, you know, you can move stuff around like that. You can edit them through there. But just by clicking the X, you can also duplicate fields. If you have a field that you think you might maybe use in like a different section of the form, click duplicate. That'll duplicate that, that field. Um, let's see. Yeah, just kind of everything else, just some uh, examples there. We don't really need the date, company, yeah, sure, we'll have that. Don't need that. Okay, so we got our form. Click update. And then we can, once we update it, we can just go out to our page and take a look at it. Uh, but the one last thing here is with the settings, uh, the form settings, I'll show you something in here. This is just a little bit more uh, customization to the form that it gives you like the form title, the form description. You can even say what like the submit button says. So here's our form title. We can give it a description if we want. Uh, label placements, we can have them top, left, or right aligned. And the labels it's talking about are these right here. These are the labels. So you can have them to the top left or the right because the bottom is the, uh, the sub labels. That, that's saved for the sub labels like the sub-label pl placement below or above. Um, description placement. You can also give descriptions for fields, like in your form, if you have a field that is, it, that it, there's a possibility it might be confusing for the person, you can give it a description. There's a description field for it, and it kind of just gives a little bit of text like underneath the field for them to read, and it, just explaining that a little bit further. Here's the form button, input type, you can have your own image or some text with the button like that. You can say, you know, submit, um, you know, send now, you know, just whatever, whatever you want that button to be there at the bottom, the submit button. Save and continue. You can have that as an option. Uh, this is that anti-spam thing I was telling you about. There's something called anti-spam honeypot. And what it does is it it puts like a hidden it puts a hidden field in here. You can't see it when you're just a user using the form. And it's a, it's a field that sometimes people for some reason have these bots that scan people's sites for you know contact forms. It puts in information automatically. This bot that they use it'll put in information automatically. It's just a bunch of spam. And if, if it fills in that hidden field, if it fills in the hidden field, it won't let them submit the form. And so that's what this little anti-spam honeypot does is it puts a hidden field that, you know, a, a regular person like us filling out the form, we're not going to see that field and we're not going to put anything in that field. And so then we could submit the form. But with those, those, those spam bots, they fill out all the fields in the form, including the one that's hidden. And so it's not gonna let them submit it. So that's what the anti-spam honeypot is. So that, we usually have that enabled because I mean, why not, you know, why not have an extra layer, layer of spam protection? And you can also have the anti-spam honeypot along with the recapture because, you know, who knows, some, something out there, some kind of spam bot might even get past the recaptures some days. So um, that's an, also an option there. Uh, just a little bit of extra settings here. Schedule the form. You can make it go live on a certain day. Entry limits. Maybe have like a, you know, the top, there are like the first 100 people get something. I don't know. It has like an entry limit. And then click update form settings and that will update the form.